meaningless war that is going to hit six months with thousands of lives lost, property loss and a huge destruction to infrastructure. The Rapid Support Forces is putting forward an initiative for what they called the establishment of the new Sudanese state, calling for the adoption of a federal system of government and a civilian government representing all regions of Sudan. In addition to approving the establishment of a new Sudanese army for the purposes of building a single military institution that distances itself from politics. The army commander, Abdel Fattah al Buhan responded to the RSF call by implicitly refusing and insisting on continuing the fighting until it defeats what he calls the rebels against its authority. Sudan needs peace and a civilian rule. The African Union, IGAD, EU and neighbors of Sudan are all working on a single initiative, including South Arabia, USA proposal in Jeddah to stop the war. With two military coups in West Africa, can the war in Sudan stabilize the Sahel countries, creating an environment for Al-Qaeda to strive or will peace prevail? The African Diaspora Forum is hosting this seminar today to discuss the conflict in Sudan. The African Diaspora Forum, as a pan-Africanist organization, wants peace in Africa. In line with one of the themes of the African Union, which says silencing the guns, what we have observed in the last 12 to 24 months is that guns are not being silenced in Africa. And the question that all of us as progressive Africans are confronted with is how do we build peace in Africa? How do we stop the wars in Africa? How do we focus on production in Africa so that we stop the migration uh, to European countries? We know that uh, many Africans die in the seas trying to look for greener pastures outside the continent. Who benefits from the war? The wars in Africa. In this seminar, we have Dr. Elgon Abdul, a Sudanese national, who is going to introduce the subject to us before we get to our main speak, Dr. Elgon. Thank you, Comrade. I tried to get this machine working, but I failed to make it uh, work. So, uh, we will see how we proceed. I need to give you an introduction. In 1989, Omar al-Bashir had a military coup against the, the civilian government in Sudan, Ustad al-Mahdi. And uh, supporting him with the Muslim Brotherhood of Sudan. And uh, in, in establishing their rule, hundreds of professionals has to be abducted, put in prisons. We have prisons that are called the ghost houses where they, they blind you and take you somewhere where you don't know and you stay there for years. Personally, I had seven months of security jails. Some of my friends have been for three years with no detention without trial. They practically took every activist until they have established their rule. When they did that, then favoritism became the rule of the day. If you are not from the Muslim Brotherhood, if you are teaching at the university, you lose your job. If you are in the public sector, you lose your job. If you are not supportive, personally, I was asked to be a minister in my state. When I refused, I said, I'm not working with a dictatorial regime. They said to me, if you are not with us, 
it means you are against us. So this is how they were ruling. They were met with huge popular resistance. And actually, there is not a single month where there is no activity in one of the cities, almost for 30 years. And because of that rule, hundreds of thousands lost their lives in South Sudan, in a war that <coughs> had to end by the separation of Sudan, of South Sudan from Sudan. In Darfur, the war have killed so many people. The United Nations said it's about 300,000 have lost their lives in the first five years of the war. To the degree that al-Bashir himself and more than 52 of his officers and other politicians were indicted by the International Criminal Court. Many of you might have. That al-Bashir was unable to, to travel anywhere until he ventured in South Africa, thinking that uh, President Zuma, who was a personal friend of his, will allow him. But he has to run away from South Africa, as we say, with his tail behind his legs. Many of you remember that what has happened here. So, this popular <coughs> resistance against the regime in Sudan succeeded in 2018 to boil into a very strong movement that deposed al-Bashir and his regime. This is mainly because the youth who were previously trying their luck crossing the Libyan desert and the Mediterranean to go for greener pastures have found that there is no way that they can go there as Europe have closed the borders. So they decided let us die in Sudan instead of dying in the Mediterranean or in the Libyan desert. And strongly this civilian movement deposed al-Bashir and brought Dr. Hamdok as a, as a prime minister, but unfortunately, the agreement that was done was an agreement between the civilians and the military. And the military at that time were composed of two, the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces, which is a force that is created by law from parliament, signed by the minister. It's an official, it's an official army. The revolution could not overrule over those two armies. And this agreement between the two fired back after the revolution. The other problem that has happened is that the, the civilians were unable to rule effectively. Let me put it that way. Because there were so many problems they need to face. The 30 years, you see, I remember my son was telling me two days ago that there was a joke in South Africa that every politician who is asked about why we do we have uh, load shedding, they say it is the, the problem of apartheid. So he said to me, everyone is still blaming apartheid, he said, 20 years after apartheid have ended. The same thing happened to our politicians in Sudan who came after the revolution. They couldn't do anything and when you ask them, they say, oh, it is a problem of the 30 years of authoritarian rule. And they couldn't make a difference in people's lives. So people didn't have that full uh, belief in the, the, the betterment of the civilian rule in their lives. And the people of the old regime also, they were unable to agree to be weaned from being in government. So they used all their hands in the army, in the security, and in the public sector to, to prevent the success of the government of the revolution. And in the end, they had a military coup in 2021 that deposed the 
civilian government and put them all in jail. When this happened, the Sudanese spirit of revolution came back again and people went into the street. And for two years, the coup was unable to create a government because everyone who would take job with those uh, military was unable to, to, to speak in public. He will immediately be. So they couldn't find a way to rule. So they decided to go for a second coup. This time it's different. It's a war. And this war happened because the rapid support forces looked at it and found that, hey, I think if I sided with the revolutionaries, I would have a better terms in the future than if I stayed with the military. So immediately when it sided with the people, although the rapid support forces is composed of, of uh, it's not, it's not a military organization as such. The, the government brought it to suppress rebels against the national government. So they are very ruthless organization and they have a very bad history in Sudan. But you see, uh, as they say, the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <coughs> when they decided to side with the revolution, the revolutionary said, encourage them to continue until we have a rule. But this made the army angry and the army decided to fight the <coughs> rapid support forces. Those have arms, those have arms, and in between them, <coughs> we are suffering. <coughs> the war now enters its fifth month with huge <coughs> devastation. And what is fearing, what we are fearing most is that it turns into a tribal or ethnic war because the previous regime is trying to push it into that direction. Although people are resisting because of the revolution. The revolution, by the way, was a real one. It creates a sort of empowerment that I haven't seen in my life. Even seven-year-olds you speak to them, you find that they understand the context of what is happening and what they want for the future of their life. They understand why their father is not with them, why their brother is not with them, why their friend have died, killed by the military. They can understand that there is a price that we need to pay to be free. So it created a very good awareness. And this is preventing the, uh, this uh, war into getting into a tribal uh, tribal uh, war. According to United Nations last week, the government, the, 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 the war has killed more than 5,000 civilians. About 7 million Sudanese are displaced or are refugees. One, one million are refugees out of the country. Of course, all schooling almost stop all universities all the, the destruction of the infrastructure factories hospitals water and electricity stations all this is out of work it is a very bad situation people thought it will end in two months but now it is in its fifth month there is problems with agricultural season <coughs> there is no money to pay laborers there is no equipment, there is no fertilizers, uh, the, the hospitals are not working because the workers have fled for their lives, there are no in medicines, factories have stopped producing medicines, you name it, every sector has been impacted very badly by this war. Unfortunately, both the, the military army chaired by Burhan, and the rapid support forces chaired by Hemeti. They speak peace, but they practice war. There is a joke in Sudan that speaks about the army general. It says he, in, in his car, he is, he is, what's it, doing right, 
the light is going right, but he will drive the car left. You never understand what he meant. And this is creating a problem for us. And people are saying categorically, we will never allow the military or the rapid support forces to be part of politics in the future. I wanted just to mention another point that I missed, is that Hamdok, the prime minister, when he did his annual budget, he said, my government is in control of only 18% of the national GDP. 82% of the GDP is controlled by companies that are controlled by the army or the rapid support forces. So practically, those two armies are in control of all Sudan, economically and politically, and the power. There is a background to all this revolution. Sudan has been uh, ruled from the center, from Khartoum, the capital, and since independence. And this, there was a neglect of rural areas. So just to give you an example, if you, if you wanted just to have your, your ID, you have to have your birth certificate. You can't do it in, unless you come to Khartoum. So centralization of everything. If you want a good school, you have to come to Khartoum. If you want a good doctor, you have to come to Khartoum. The, only the good roads are in Khartoum. So everyone, so people are saying with time, the, the military regime ruralized Khartoum. Khartoum became a rural area. Why? Because millions came into a circle around Khartoum. The whole rural area came to Khartoum. Instead of urbanizing the rural areas, he ruralized uh, 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 Khartoum. But to give you a context of this fight now, because of this, almost all regions, people rebelled against the government. And the army was unable to control them. So he decided to create a militia. And he started the militia. This militia later was regulated by creating a law for it, and it became part of the army. But it is still the militia that was established by al-Bashir. This is a militia that now rebelled against his regime, because now they are fat enough to fight the, 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 the one, the government. The war Hamdok, the, our prime, previous prime minister, said that the war will make the conflict in Syria and Yemen look like a small play. So the African Union, Saudi Arabia, the Americans, all the neighbors of Sudan, all are trying to solve the problem. But unfortunately, the same people who are trying to solve the problem have linkages with the two warring armies. So in public, they want to stop the war. In private, they are giving the warring parties to continue uh, fighting. But a strange thing that is happening in Sudan is this, because people have had enough of the central government. They see the rapid support forces, uh, what's it, general, as representative of the grievances of the poor, because he is now challenging the center. And he wanted, being from the rural areas, to come and rule from the center. This is creating complication to the system, because he is actually a, a militia uh, general, not graduating from the army school. And the thing is very complex. As I said, there are a lot of mediation efforts that are still continuing, but at the same time they are continuing, the war is uh, continuing. 
And we felt that the South African neighbors, no one is interested in democracy. You see Egypt, Chad, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Saudi Arabia across the Red Sea, none of them is a democracy. And none of them wanted to see a democracy at its, at its borders, where his people will also ask for their rights. And this is complicating the situation in, in Sudan. But this is why when we, as a South African, I will say since South Africa is a democracy, it must stand up and talk differently from the countries that are not democracies and make uh, speak loudly and get interested and involved in supporting the return to a civilian rule. Not only this, also civilian society, the, civilian, the civil society. And I'm really very happy about the African Diaspora Forum that it is highlighting the issue of the war in Sudan. We wanted more civil uh, uh, society to get involved into the the problem in Sudan because we believe negotiation is the only solution. Although the, ar the, the army says we are going to crush the rebels, insisting on a military solution, we say it can't because the war in Sudan that was in 1955 ended by negotiations in 1972. The war that started in 1983, the, the John Garang War, ended in Nivasha in 2005 with negotiation. There was no war in Sudan that had ever been settled by military. So the, we have no other alternative than coming to the, to the negotiations. But it seems that there are pressure for what we call the third party the people who are pushing the, 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 the army to continue fighting so that they come back to rule, uh, to rule Sudan. So we speak about the way forward and out of the war. We think that there is a need for establishing a professional army. Our army in Sudan now, every other day is going to a town and saying, please come, we will open camps for you, come and we train you so that you protect yourself. And then people say to the army, why are we paying you your salaries? If you can't protect us, what is your role? We are not, and this is why all the camps, we are not getting people who will do it because we are saying we are not going to do the job of the army. This is your work. The other thing is we believe the army must go out of politics and must go out of economy so that all the companies that are run by the army and the representative of all forces should be now run by the, the Sudan uh, uh, fiscus. We are saying the people who were brought into positions of power because of the previous regime must all leave their posts. We need to create a new atmosphere where no one was brought in. And we needed to create a sort of affirmative action. We spoke about three experiences <coughs> of, two, of countries with conflict. Rwanda, South Africa, and Malaysia. And we said, Sudan is a complex country. Can we benefit from any of the three? So people are saying, from the Rwandan experience, we might need to bring in a constitution with a leader that is given full power, like Kigame, and give him five to six years to fix things. But fix it with a, a parliament that is looking at everything and making things happen. And then at the same time, applying transitional justice to all violations of laws so that no one uh, will not answer to the crimes he has committed. No crime should be allowed to go without going to a judge. From the Malaysian experience, we wanted to look at what they called in Malaysia the positive discrimination. In Malaysia, the Malay, who are the majority in Malaysia, were controlled by the Chinese who are minority. <coughs> In Sudan, it's not the same. In Sudan, actually, 
the 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 minority rulers are exploiting the whole country for themselves so we are saying we wanted to create where we bring some of the minorities especially women for example to positions of of authority so that the rebellion that has been happening in the last 50 years will stop the anger in peoples will stop from south africa we wanted to bring this philosophy of the truth and and, re, uh, uh, and reconciliation as well as affirmative action so that people uh, can uh, stop the social unrest from the disadvantaged in conclusion I wanted to say that the war in Sudan has started with a vengeance and no one knows when it is going to end because the military think they are born to govern and all solutions should be by the barrel of the gun. We are civilians, we don't have guns. We can only face the guns and die. And this is what has been happening in the last five years. We think South Africa needs to be seen and heard supporting <coughs> cessation of hostilities and supporting the return to civilian rule. We think the South African civil society should be involved in the efforts to stop the war and the private businesses of South Africa can get engaged in the reconstruction of the infrastructure of Sudan, including from the factories to education, to schools, to even ideas of democratic governments. We wanted the civil society in South Africa to assist us on how to govern Sudan in a way that we will never go back to a military uh, uh, rule, how can we implement the rule of law and human rights? Because it seems we are unable to make that, uh, that happen. This is a sort, in short, a, 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 a synopsis of what is happening in Sudan. We hope that things will go in our favor, that the war will stop as soon as possible, so that people can go back to their normal lives. Thank you.